Happy holidays everyone. Merry Christmas everyone. Hope you're having a good one. Now 2023 is nearing its end and for me this has been a quick year. <laughs> Now I play a lot of video games, about 25 new games every year or so. This is an annual thing on my channel. I have previously done a game of the year video like five times at least. This is my seventh game of the year video on my channel. So we are going over three lists. One containing the games that I played this year. That will be my games of the year 2023. Then we will have a list of games not released in 2023. <laughs> That is a mouthful. But I played them in 2023. And then I will have honorable mentions. So I mean, sit back, relax, grab your whatever. And I uh, hope you will enjoy this video. Now let's start off with two games that I loved playing this year, but they were not released this year. The first one is Valkyrie Elysium, and it was released last year, but I started playing it December 22, so then I played it a lot in 2023 actually. It is a hack and slash Valkyrie game by Square Enix, loving the setting, the mood, the graphics, and all the themes that we are exploring in this game. You are a Valkyrie, and you have Ain Hadiars, and it's a whole mood and I am recently also dipping back into this game now played it yesterday on my PS portal and I am having a good time I want to mention that as one game that I enjoyed so much earlier in 2023 Next up, not released this year, we have Tower of Fantasy, which is a game that was released on the PS5 this year, but it is not a new game. It was originally released in 2021 on PC, but it had its PS5 release this year. And I have been enjoying this world and these graphics, and it is quite honestly like Genshin Impact 2. I highly recommend this game since it is free to play. You can easily download it on your PS5 or PC and have a go and see what you think. I am enjoying how the combat works. I like my character which you can customize to the fullest and I'm just enjoying the colors and all of the voice acting and it is such a high production game so definitely gonna have to mention that one as it has been something that I've been playing a lot now uh, in the later parts of 2023. Now we are going to talk about the games of the year 2023. Actual released also. I have five games on my games of the year list. Not necessarily in order, but I'm going to say an order. And you're not going to like what I have in first place. But I was sitting upstairs while I was writing this list. I was like, am I going to be honest? Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, definitely. So you're not gonna like it, I'm just saying. Okay, number five, we have Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. It is a big game and this is the game of the year for a lot of you people. I asked on Discord and a lot of people are saying Tears of the Kingdom is taking their first place as a game of the year 2023 and for good reason. It is a huge game. It has been highly anticipated. It is the biggest Zelda game ever to be released. And I can say that with confidence since you have the sky world, the, uh, the actual world <laughs> and the underworld. It is so big. There is a ton of content in this game and I am not done. Not done. Will I ever be done with this game? I don't know. But it is just more of Breath of the Wild. So that is one of my games of the year. But I'm not done with it. <laughs> now next up. And I had a feeling that this one would make my official list when I started playing it. And that is Assassin's Creed Mirage. That's my cats, okay. Assassin's Creed Mirage. It's taking place in ancient Baghdad. It is an amazing game. I am loving the setting, the music. 
I am loving the gameplay and how you play an Assassin's Creed game. This game is just uh, a game that is made for me because I love the stealth mechanics and I enjoy exploring the city and the world and doing everything, collecting everything. I play that on PS5 and I have that as the fourth place of Game of the Year because it's amazing. Check out my video on that. Very good. <laughs> Now in third place, I am putting Fae Farm. One of the games that I've played the most when it comes to hours played in 2023. I've been really obsessed with Fae Farm. I started it on PC. I put in like 45 hours into the PC version and then I bought it on Switch and then I put in 70 plus hours or more on the Switch version because it was just such a cozy and good life simulator farming game, which is such a comfortable time for me. I'm loving that genre. I can play that for so many hours and I'm having a blast with games like that. Fay Farm is the best life sim farming game of 2023 in my opinion. It is making my list. Highly highly recommend Fay Farm and I know a lot of you also enjoyed it tons. A lot of mining and a lot of focus on combat and mining. Also there's crafting and all of the other things. And I really enjoyed collecting bugs. Check out my video on that too if you want to see more of that. Now in second place of game of the year 2023. Hogwarts Legacy, which had such a big hype earlier this year. Me and Tiny Hats and all of the Discord blew up with a ton of Hogwarts Legacy talk. We were obsessed with this game. I will never forget getting the broom for my first time. That is like in my top 10 gaming moments ever in my life maybe. Because of the freedom when I got my broom I was able to fly everywhere and I was like, is this what video games has come to what a time to be alive such a well-developed game so much polish and love put into Hogwarts Legacy and I think it was sad that it wasn't nominated to the official game of the year awards that was so weird because that was one hell of a game Hogwarts Legacy it is also out on the switch now but I wouldn't play it on the switch I played it on PS5 which is uh, my preferred way of playing most games, uh, maybe, as of right now. <laughs> uh, highly recommend that. I, I saw it on sale also. It's starting to look a lot like Christmas. It's starting to go on sale, I mean. The Harry Potter game. Legwards Hogacy, as we said on Disky Disc. Good times, good times. I, I will never forget that game. Okay, so first place. And this is the part of me being honest and getting negativity in my comment section, probably. You're not gonna like this, but I have reasons, okay? I have legit reasons why I'm putting this as my first place. And that is because this game is my most played game of 2023. And that is Forspoken. The game that everyone hated. Uh-oh. <laughs> The game that no one enjoyed because of the bad protagonist. It is a character development story. She starts out really bad, so unlikable. Never mind that. The game mechanic, the actual gameplay, it outweighs that bad character, the bad traits that she had in the beginning of the game. She was a criminal and she was bad and she was rude. She was rude to everyone who did not deserve being rude to. That is the story and that is the creature. I get that <laughs> but I enjoyed the gameplay and the world and the lore of the world so much the music the graphics the places the traversal the questing the way that you felt so incredibly powerful in this fantasy world with flying and running so fast it was almost like a Sonic the Hedgehog sort of movement in this 3d beautiful environment with so much lore to it if you read all of the entries which I did all of the lore entries anyway. I enjoyed the world so much and I devoured 
Forspoken. I did every single thing in Forspoken, mesmerized by the world. And it doesn't really matter how the main character was, because that, if you can look past that, it is an incredibly gameplay good game with great 3D map, loving collecting upgrades, loving collecting the cats in the game and doing all of the fun upgrades to all of your skills. Every single skill in the game had a way of upgrading it, like small challenges. I enjoyed it so much and I feel already nostalgic whenever I hear the main theme of Forspoken. And I played the DLC, I 100%ed everything and it was just a moment. It was just a moment. The world. Oh my god. I want to have Forspoken 2. Maybe another protagonist. Okay, good. Uh, but the world, okay, and the gameplay and the traversal. I want to have all of that and the magic. Oh, casting magic is so satisfying in Forspoken. Also, you can get Forspoken really cheap now. <coughs> I highly recommend it. <laughs> so, <laughs> that is my game of the year. <laughs> Sorry. Um, very good. Okay, whatever. I mean, whatever. Let me know your uh, game of the year down below. Anyways, don't leave yet. <laughs> Most people, they were like, no, I'm clicking out of that video now. Whenever I mentioned Forspoken, but I have honorable mentions also. Games that were good. And it's in the list, honorable mentions. Let's go. Star Ocean, The Divine Force, honorable mention because I played it a lot in the early parts of 2023 and I enjoyed it and it was good. I have great memories with that game already. Now here's a game that I played a lot. Uh, if we are counting DLCs, which I am uh, apparently. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Future Redeemed. Such a good DLC, very good. Oh my god, get that. It's like torn all over again, only better. It's a separate story from Xenoblade Chronicles 3, so you can just get that and play that in Christmas and have a good time. And uh, very good. I had a video about that, you can check that out if you want to hear more about that. Uh, which goes for most of these games, I've made separate videos on most of them. Okay, <clears throat> Wildflowers, uh, the second best farming life sim that I've played in 2023. Taking second place from Fae Farm, I guess. I guess? A uh, really good game, I've mentioned it a couple of times now already. Story of Seasons, A Wonderful Life, which was more or less a nostalgic game for me since it was a remake of an older game. Maybe it is not for everyone since it has somewhat outdated mechanics in it. Also did a review of that. Okay, so now we have Harvest Moon, The Winds of Antos, still playing it. Neighbor Stefan is still playing it, he loves it, I love it. Uh, that is definitely an honorable mention in a game of the year video of uh, this sort. But Super Mario RPG, and that is my Christmas game, which is currently what I'm playing. Now that you're watching this on Christmas Eve, Christmas evening, which is actual Christmas if you ask any Norwegian person. We celebrate on Christmas Eve, okay? Happy Christmas. Okay, another honorable mention is My Time at Sandrock, which I'm also currently playing. Playing now at the end of the year on my PS Portal, PS5. Very good. Recommend that. Uh, also did a video on that. And then I put in, in my list, in my book, I soon need a new book, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I put in Fire Emblem Engage because it is a good game, but I am not done with it because I have too many games. And at that time I had too many games, which I also do now. And I also wrote down, I can't play every game. That's true though. No one can play every game, but it needed an honorable mention because it was very beautiful. Uh, yeah, game of the year. Were you disappointed? I want to hear yours, okay? I gave you my personal list, which is not an official list by any other person than myself. So that was my personal list and you have a personal list also and I want you to put that down there in the comment section so that I can read it and see what you played. Maybe I missed out on some goodies. I want to know. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you and your family and friends and pets and pets have a wonderful Christmas. Make the best of everything and join the Discord down below and we can have a cozy Christmas time together. Happy holidays and be nice. I hope you are playing good games. I know I will. 
Thank you so much for following Isha Gaming through this year as well. I'm looking forward to see what next year brings. And I'm so happy that you are with me on this channel's journey. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later.